of them. And the nice thing about the supernovae is we know how bright they intrinsically are. So by seeing how bright they appear to us, we can figure out how far away they are. The further, the dimmer they are, the further they are away. When you've done this, in the 1990s, two independent teams of astronomers succeeded in doing this, and they both got the same answer. The answer is that if you looked at the galaxy right now and waited a billion years, a billion years from now will be moving away from us faster. The universe is not just getting bigger, it is accelerating. And this was in 1998, the breakthrough of the year for Science Magazine, a little picture of Albert Einstein blowing up universes in his pipe. That's what makes you the man of the century, when you can blow up universes <laughs> in your pipe. People were very excited about this, but they didn't necessarily believe it. It's a remarkable claim you want some way of checking. How do you check this? How do you check this idea that 70% of the universe is not just dark, but it's not even matter, it's not even particles, it's something that is intrinsic to space itself? Well, gravitational lensing once again gives us the answer, but instead of measuring and weighing the amount of stuff in a cluster, you measure the whole universe all at once. This is another NASA satellite, the Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe, WMAP. It took pictures of the universe when it was 400,000 years after the Big Bang, a tiny little baby universe. And what you do is you just look at the size of the ripples of the universe in that period, and those will be bigger or smaller depending on the overall geometry of the universe. The answer is that the geometry of the universe is flat, but the amount of matter in the universe, both ordinary matter and dark matter, is not enough to explain why the universe is flat. It is perfectly well explained if you believe in dark energy. So a completely independent line of reasoning has led us to believe that 70% of the universe is dark energy. It's making the universe accelerate. That fact made a prediction that the universe would be flat. We went out and measured it, and it is flat. So in 2003, the breakthrough of the year was the fact that we hadn't made a mistake. WMAP went and confirmed this crazy idea. This inventory of the universe is sufficiently surprising that figuring out it's true is a breakthrough and making sure it's right is also a breakthrough. So there we are. This is what we've accomplished in the last 10 or 20 years of cosmology. We finally figured out an inventory for what the universe is made of. The problem is it's a little bit surprising. We don't know why this is 70%, this is 25%, this is 5%. These numbers change as a function of time. The dark energy doesn't go away as the universe expands. It's a constant energy density in every cubic centimeter, but the matter does go away. So the past, the matter was winning, in the future we'll have almost nothing in the universe but dark energy. This is a very satisfying story from an observational point of view, a very challenging story from a theoretical point of view, and a completely irrelevant story from a political point of view. <laughs> or so you would think. But I'm gonna take the challenge of getting a moral to this story. The interesting fact <laughs> about this story is that it puts us in our place. We live in a universe where only 5% of the stuff in the universe is the same kind of stuff that we are made of. We are not what the universe is about. We are the olive in the martini, which is not what the martini is about. We are the blinking lights on the Christmas tree. We are not the substance of what is going on. So this is an interesting fact about the universe that we would never have been led to if we just sat around and thought. This is a story that is forced on us by going out there, collecting data, and dealing with it. And I want to contrast that way of thinking with, no booze here, a movie you may be familiar with called What the Bleep Do We Know? This is a movie, someone had the bright idea of making a movie about quantum mechanics. So I applaud them for their chutzpah when it comes to that. But the problem is, this movie is full of nonsense. The movie tries to get across the message that what quantum mechanics teaches us is that we can change the nature of physical reality by thinking about it. That by putting ourselves in the right mental state, we can make the real world what we want it to be. And after the movie came out, the filmmakers were all given high-ranking jobs in the Bush administration. I'm not sure how that happened. <laughs> David Albert is a philosopher of science at Columbia University, and he appeared in the movie, and he's an extremely sensible person who knows what's going on. Basically, he was snookered into appearing in the movie. They interviewed him for four hours and took 10-second snippets out of that where he says, oh, yes, that's very interesting. When the movie came out, he was outraged at how he was portrayed in the movie, and he went around giving talks to people who liked this movie. He tried to explain to them what was going on. 
And the to David would basically say this. Look, when you're trying to understand the world, there are two approaches you can have. One kind of approach is that when you try to look at the world, you come with a precondition. You come with a set of demands that the world tell a story that is flattering to you. The other thing you could do is to come with an authentically open mind and open heart and expend many different hypotheses and compare them to the evidence and accept what the evidence tells you, discard the hypotheses that don't fit the evidence and believe in the hypotheses that do. And that second method is called science. And I would like to say, that it's more than that. That second method is called honesty. And it probably is a good method to use in all sorts of fields of human endeavor. <laughs> Science is one of them, but there are probably others that you can also think of. So in the end, however, I think nevertheless, despite the fact that we're good scientists, the universe has managed to tell us a flattering story about ourselves. Here is the Hubble Deep Field with all those galaxies. This little insert is an image of the Earth as seen from the Voyager satellite as it was leaving the solar system in February 1990. There we are, a pale blue dot that is an insignificant little piece of this wide universe, most of which is completely invisible to us. Nevertheless, despite the fact that we are this tiny little piece in this very, very vast cosmos, over just a couple hundred years, a few thousand years of thinking and collecting data and dealing with it, we have managed to come to understand a great deal about how this universe is working. We have managed to extend our imaginations and our instruments across the stretches of space and learn a lot about a universe that is a lot bigger than we are. And it's that kind of fact that make, gives me hope that there may be uh, some hope for us in the end after all. Thank you.